My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak. It will, I know, that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love is rare. Is any she belied with false compare? Hello, this is Edward Nilgis. In Sonnet 130, Shakespeare satirizes the medieval and Renaissance conventions of courtly love. In those conventions, the idealized lady love is compared to the sun and moon and seven stars in elaborate simile, metaphor, and allegory. Shakespeare was rather like his contemporary Miguel de Cervantes of Spain, the author of the novel Don Quixote, for Shakespeare had an ambivalent relationship to the conventions of courtly love. He, and perhaps Cervantes also, found them useful, beautiful, noble, ennobling, and terribly amusing at the same time. Shakespeare, in a quite frightening scene in his early hit play Richard III, has a vicious gangsta use these courtly conventions to banter with the naive Lady Anne, seducing her, having killed her husband and her father-in-law. Later, and in a later play, Henry V tells his betrothed Catherine de France of his inability to mince it at love, and while Shakespeare may have found his Henry V a bit of a thug as well, Henry was clearly one of his good guys, and Henry tries wooing Catherine in plain, unvarnished terms, much like the author of Sonnet 130. Sonnet 130 is self-reflexive in the manner of greatness, like Bach's Art of Fugue in Beethoven's Last Piano Sonatas. All three works of art are, among other things, meditations on the limits of their own form. Shakespeare rejects one convention after another, so I have used a light and bantering tone to, live, to deliver the first three quatrains. In the last couplet of the sonnet, having quite possibly infuriated the lady hearing the sonnet for the first time, possibly in the same way Catherine de France should react on stage with a frown when Henry tells her he won't die for love. Shakespeare in Sonnet 130 becomes dead serious in the last couplet, but should be delivered in a plain style for this reason. 